a mysterious monster living in the darkness, cold and high pressure. One of the largest land predators of all time, as well as incredibly poisonous jellyfish. In this edition, you'll see these and other most dangerous creatures over history. Bloop is considered the most dangerous creature in the world over history. Nothing is known about this monster for sure, but the fact of its existence somewhere at great depths makes you horrified. Even in the past, in the days of legendary explorers, many people, after their expeditions, reported an anomalous 1,000-foot-long giant that had swum past their ship. Of course, no one believed their words. Who knows what they could make up? However, very soon the scientists found an evidence that nobody could overturn. At the end of the 20th century, in 1997, a hydrophone recorded a strange sound directly from the depths of the Pacific Ocean. The hum you can hear now, directly from the water, at least 3,107 miles deep, sounding like dolphins or whales. As you can imagine, none of the creatures known to science could produce the sounds because of such a great distance, purely physically. Moreover, so far there's no evidence that those were living creatures to utter them. The reason is that people cannot find any other rational explanation. This way, they used the so-called exclusion method before dwelling on the version it was Bloop, the monster of the depths. If these sounds belonged to some living creatures, they would have been of considerable dimensions, not less than a thousand feet long. The scientists of the past were likely to be true. It must have been in vain that people didn't believe them. Even if there is a huge monster somewhere under the water, it doesn't mean that it feeds on other fish or large creatures. It's quite likely that the creature prefers krill and plankton. Well, if that's true, Bloop had better not be up there. According to sailors, this domain is still inhabited by the megalodons. These legendary and most powerful sharks in the world terrify the sea creatures and more. The megalodon was definitely one of the biggest fishes in the world. As experts believe, the animal was 15 meters or even 18 meters long. However, we shouldn't forget it was a shark and didn't eat any plankton. The shark fed on the flesh. Besides, it would be a kind of sacrilege to swallow up the minnows having such giant and sharp teeth. They could grow up to 20 centimeters long. What's more, they were incredibly sharp, strong, and bulky. Even if the predator lost some teeth during another battle, new ones grew in shortly after due to Mother Nature. Along with its teeth, Meg also was the best biter over the history of the planet. Experts estimate it to be about six times more powerful than a white shark's bite. Of course, if this killer were still alive today, fishermen and fish would fare badly. However, it's kind of extinct. Why kind of? Yes, because despite the official version, many people still find strange huge teeth or marks on the body of giant creatures. So the chances are Meg is still alive. The shark can be somewhere far away from people where nobody will ever notice it alive. Tyrannosaurus rex, or simply T-Rex, could not hide from people's eyes. This amazing dinosaur lived only in North America and was considered one of the strongest over history. It will just suffice to mention his sizes. The monster could exceed 40 feet in length and weigh about 9 tons. Now that you have some idea of this extinct predator, I suggest we talk about him more. So let's start with the name. It was given to the dinosaur for a reason. When people found his remains at the beginning of the 20th century, they immediately realized this Tyrannosaur was great and was definitely at the top of the food chain, so it was important to name it appropriately. One of the scientists came up with the idea of naming him as Tyrannosaurus rex, combining the words tyrant and rex. The latter, by the way, is Latin for king. This way, it turned out that Tyrannosaurus rex was a king among his own kind. But even a king could add some flaws. In Rex's case, for example, that was definitely his hands. The Tyrannosaurus' hands were unbelievably tiny. His arms were about a meter long. It was negligible with respect to his overall size. Because of such astonishing dimensions, people still can't figure out what he really needed them for, either for hunting, which is doubtful, or for eating, which is also unlikely. According to more realistic theories, the sizes made it easier for the animals to get hold of the prey by attacking it with their vicious jaws or to pick themselves up off the ground. 
Though, who cares about those tiny hands when the main weapon is clearly something different? T. rex was one of the most powerful biters, among other dinosaurs. Of course, it was due to his jaws. As an adult, the animal had about 60 teeth, each one up to 12 inches long. Now, imagine them clamping together at incredible speed and with tremendous force. Hardly anyone could survive that. Now, you shouldn't think T. rex was the only and the strongest dinosaur among all the rest. This opinion will definitely insult Spinosaurus. Better not spoil relations with this giant. Spinosaurus is one of the largest land predators in our planet history. His skull alone was three and a half feet long. How do you tell them apart? They all look the same, some of you will think. In fact, it's not that way. Distinguishing Spinosaurus from the rest can be quite simple due to his comb. This thing was really necessary for the monster. For example, the comb allowed it to store fat. Spinosaurus saved it like a camel did so as to prepare for the prolonged hunger. What's more, the comb was also the main tool of attracting females. They looked for a male with the most beautiful node. In addition, the comb had vital functions. For example, it contained everything needed for thermal regulation. Since Spinosaurus lived in the bitter environment, it could regulate his body temperature and make him adapt to what was around. At the same time, the comb let Spinosaurus appear much larger. This way, other predators were afraid of opposing him. People met this creature in a slightly different way. Nobody found the remains of the box jellyfish. Something sadder happened here. According to one legend, the residents of Australia were having their most ordinary day near the water. Not suspecting anything, they saw a man falling down right in front of them. He fell on his back like a stone without any signs of life. The man was immediately taken to a local doctor, but he was helpless. Despite this, the doctor made the right decision and asked people to fish out all the living creatures in the area. That way they could find out who was the culprit. Towards evening, people realized it was a jellyfish. Not a simple jellyfish, but an invisible and previously unknown one. Today, science knows about 30,000 species of jellyfish. The box jellyfish is considered the most poisonous and unusual of them all. What's more surprising, the species also includes the most dangerous representatives. One of them is the sea wasp, or Chirinex fleckery. Its name means hand of death, with the venom believed to be able to compete even with the super toxic blue ringed octopus. Fortunately, the sea wasp doesn't prey on humans. However, it may still sting us occasionally purely for safety reasons. Otherwise, it feeds on small fish and shrimps. With respect to the sea wasp's size, it might consume larger creatures as well. The animal's almost transparent dome reaches the size of a basketball, whereas its tentacles can be up to 10 feet long. If you ask me, while talking about the box jellyfish, I imagine meeting it somewhere offshore. How scary and terrifying it would be. It would likely have felt my fear and decided to relieve me with its therapeutic touch and quotes. Anyway, the honey badger would have survived an encounter with the jellyfish for 100%. This little guy cares nothing for anything happening around it. The cute little beast is known for its fearlessness. Because of this, it's rightfully considered one of the most dangerous creatures on the planet. Strong one has nothing to lose. Together with its tail, the honey badger is about a meter long. At the same time, this relatively compact predator easily attacks the prey much larger than itself. The honey badger relies on its paws with sharp claws and powerful teeth. In addition, the animal can be successful both in battle with predators and carnivores. The honey badger is undefeatable, even fighting against the king cobra, lion, or some leopard. Attacking the honey badger, these ferocious animals find themselves in an unenviable position. There's nowhere to attack it from. Even in the fangs of a predator, the honey badger is able to twist in a way that its claws and sharp teeth get into the enemy's muzzle. Catching one of them isn't worth the effort. Therefore, even the most courageous predators usually avoid it and look for someone else. Along with that, the honey badger is also resistant to poison. Even a scorpion or wild bee do no harm to this animal. The snakes, by the way, won't do much to it either. Scientists haven't gotten at the secret of such resilience. I wonder if the honey badger could withstand a portion of poison from the golden dart frog, or does its toxicity mean too much even for that animal? Now, many of you are probably thinking, a portion of poison from whom? From a dart frog? Can we compare its venom to that of a cobra or scorpion? Yes, of course we can. 
Hardly anyone knows that these tiny monsters are not acquainted with the word overkill. A tiny frog can send up to 250 adult humans to the grave with a single touch. You may guess it was not for nothing that people added the important qualifier dart to the word frog. The mother nature thought the bright coloring would be enough to ensure that no one suffers from this frog, except that's not really true. Even if the frog is no longer there, the creature may leave a trace on its way. And if some small animal steps on the trace, it will almost instantly go out of this world. The most terrifying is that the golden dart frog can leave these footprints almost anywhere. Their bodies adapted to the new way of life so well that these amphibians decided to completely get rid of the webbing between their legs. Instead of them, the frog acquired sticky substances that allow it to crawl on vertical surfaces, even with its head down. And finally, here are some figures related to the golden dart frog. For an average adult person, it'll be enough about two micrograms of poison from the animal to become its victim. The golden dart frog releases up to 500 micrograms of toxin per day. If I were a local animal, I would abandon the forest and go to live in the water. It would be better to adapt to the conditions and exist in a new environment than to fight against these frogs. Although, who knows, maybe there's something just as dangerous living under the water, too. Someone whose name starts with or and ends with ka. Well, I'm not that good at enigmatizing, but I can tell you about the most dangerous mammals of our time. These cetaceans from the dolphin family are violent wherever they live. Their intelligence is considerably higher than other sea creatures. That's why fighting against the orcas is literally impossible. They can lure a penguin right off the glacier, disable a ship in order to sink it, chase an exhausted prey for a long time just for fun or in order to teach their cubs how to hunt. Only orcas are capable of all this. That's why they're rightfully considered one of the most dangerous creatures in the world. Along with their amazing intelligence, their bite is unrivaled as one of the most powerful. Put it shortly, it's not safer even in the water. Now I'm going to tell you about one of the creepiest birds we've ever seen. Luckily, it's flightless. Its name is Cassowary. It will not welcome you. The Cassowary is not happy about anything or anybody, demonstrating this with its aggressive behavior. The bird gets at anything moving, and what doesn't move it sets in motion and gets at later. The cassowary is the closest relative to dinosaurs among modern birds. It may play a major role here. Interestingly, its reptiloid past makes itself felt. It grows up to 180 centimeters tall and weighs up to 60 kilograms. Yes, it really does. All these photos of a cassowary standing as tall as a human are true. Since such a giant exists, it's obvious to have strong legs. You don't need to be a biologist to guess. A cassowary can run at a speed of 50 kilometers per hour. It's more like running to catch up with its enemies. And when it's finally done, the battle ends in one knockout blow. It seems to be quite easy when it comes to the cassowary. If you can see the bird, don't run, just go away slowly and don't look it in the eye. You may be lucky and it won't show aggression. Yes, it's true. Anyway, that doesn't change the situation in terms of the bird's secrets. Just take its cap alone. Scientists still haven't figured out its essence and destination until now. It consists of the same fabric as his beak, but no one can understand what it's for. There are a lot of theories on this score. Some people think it's for protection. Others believe it's for attracting females. Still others think it's got some kind of locators or thermoregulators inside. There are also those convinced that the cap is for all of these things at once. Who could compete with the terrible Megalodon? Now I'll show you the sharks that are 100 times more dangerous than him. Let's start with the sharks which can be called the creepiest, at least in terms of appearance, because they have several heads at once. Although it seems to be something unreal, in fact such sharks are more than real. They often come into the hands of fishermen and scientists. However, mostly we're talking about small sharks. This is a kind of conjoined twins which are fused and have not had time to grow. Because with such an anomaly, any animal has a hard time, and especially sharks. It's interesting that usually two-headed sharks come from the blue shark species. It's the representatives of 
this species that more often than others turn out to be mutants for unknown reasons. Such sharks are unusual and creepy, but still not very dangerous because of their size. Nevertheless, this is not the limit. Fishermen, sailors, and divers claim that they've encountered adult sharks with several heads, and this is something serious. According to them, such sharks can have from two to four or even five heads, and they do not lose in terms of strength and speed, and five dangerous jaws is something really creepy. Such sharks are definitely 100 times more dangerous than the legendary Megalodon, because they would have dealt with any sea creature or human that got in their way. However, it's not known to the end whether this information about such sharks is true or people embellish their stories. In any case, I suggest you share your thoughts about this in the comments. There's no doubt about the next creature. While there can still be controversy with adult sharks with multiple heads, this predator actually existed. It's Cretazrinia, or the Ginsu shark, and in my opinion, it could have given Megalodon a very decent fight. It's possible that this shark would even have defeated Megalodon and would have done it confidently. At least if Megalodon had been small, the victory would have definitely been for Cretazrinia. These sharks reached 26 feet in length and weighed about three and a half tons. They couldn't compete with Megalodons. Ginsu sharks lived much earlier, about 107 to 73 million years ago. Megalodons were out of the question then. Nevertheless, Cretazrinia had managed to maul other sea creatures. They even included mosasaurs, which at the time were the planet's top marine predators. They regularly put up fights from which Ginsu sharks often emerged victorious. However, at the end of the existence of these sharks, mosasaurs gained incredible power, and it was these creatures that began to dominate. Scientists believe that the sharks' large size, sharp teeth, and aggression made Cretazrinia an extremely dangerous creature. According to them, the prehistoric shark could deal with its prey in just a few bites, even if it was large. Adestus Megalodon was lucky that it didn't live at the same time with this next animal in this episode because Adestus would simply cut it open. Literally, take a look at this shark and everything falls into place. This prehistoric shark has one of the most unusual jaws of all time. Adestus is often called the scissor tooth shark. The predator could literally cut its prey in half and eat it peacefully. Many sea creatures that lived 337 to 287 million years ago experienced it themselves. By the way, one of the most famous prehistoric monsters the fish called Helicoprion has a resemblance to Adestus. It too has an unusual jaw, only in the form of a circular saw, not scissors. Scientists believe that these two creatures may be related. If Adestus fought Megalodon, it could try to stealthily sneak up on it, cut off its fin, and finish off the wounded rival. Or, on the contrary, it could have accelerated and put the scissors into the side of the ancient shark. Given the structure of the Adestus jaw, we can hazard a guess that Megalodon would at least have a difficult time in a fight with such live scissors. And yet, in a fight with Megalodon, it's not only the jaws or aggression that decide. The large size is also extremely important because Megalodon itself was the largest shark of all time. It's difficult to find worthy opponents for Megalodon with the similar size. But Tychidus is quite suitable. This giant lived 112 to 70 million years ago. It was about the same length as Megalodon, though lighter. It was a full-fledged prehistoric predator. It fed on very large mollusks and crustaceans, and on occasion snacked on invertebrates and larvae. Sometimes it could also eat carrion. This shark's jaws could easily crush the strong shells of turtles or shells of huge clams, which means that in a theoretical fight with Megalodon, it would need only one chance to bite through the legendary shark and win. Which of these sharks do you think could easily defeat Megalodon? Place your bets and share your thoughts in the comments. And I suggest we change the topic to talk about some of today's rarest sharks. It'll be just as interesting. Keep watching to see a living prehistoric shark, a shark with the most unusual appearance, and fish last seen decades ago. Megamouth Shark Let's start with this fish, which fully justifies its name. This shark is indeed big-mouthed. Its mouth inspires real fear. It seems that it's capable of swallowing anyone, including humans. But it's not. In fact, the Megamouth Shark is not predatory. It feeds on plankton and swims peacefully in the ocean. However, to find it is not an easy task. Despite the fact that the species was discovered quite a long time ago, scientists have found just over a hundred individuals and studied even less. This makes the Megamouth Shark one of the rarest 
rarest in the world. Scientists don't know much about this species, but they know for sure that this shark is one of the largest on the planet. Among other things, this is indicated by a female which was 18.7 feet long. It was caught off the coast of Japan in 2006. Not a bad size. In common individuals, size is impressive as well. They're about 13 to 16 feet long. Scientists also know that megamouth sharks are found in the southern hemisphere and that they can swim both at great depths and in shallow water. Sometimes people have found sharks of the species literally at the very surface of the water. Frilled shark. But this rare shark almost never rises to the surface, preferring to swim at extreme depths of up to 5,000 feet or even deeper. Scientists believe that these sharks are more numerous than megamouth sharks, but it's very problematic to study them properly because it's not possible to descend to the great depths and observe the animal every day. The first observation of the frilled shark in the wild took place only in 2004. The frilled shark is a perfect example of what some prehistoric sharks might look like today. This species of shark is called a fossil. The frilled shark has primitive features and doesn't even quite look like a shark. It's more like a mixture of a prehistoric shark, a modern shark, an eel, and a sea snake. Speaking of the latter, the frilled shark is relative to it, not only in terms of appearance, but also in terms of its hunting style. Unlike its relatives, this shark hunts like a snake, bending its entire body and making a sharp lunge forward. Its long and mobile jaws allow it to swallow large prey whole, and numerous rows of small and sharp as needles teeth prevent the prey from from escaping. Monkfish. The frilled shark looks strange, but it still looks like a shark. But the next animal in the episode is far from a shark in terms of appearance. Maybe it's not a shark at all, but some kind of unusual stingray. Indeed, the monkfish is very similar to a stingray, but it's still a shark. It's also known as the angel shark. It belongs to the angel sharks or Squatina genus. These broad creatures live in the Atlantic at a depth of 500 feet and in many respects mimic the behavior of ordinary stingrays. For example, they often burrow into the sand or just hide on the seabed, so they arrange an ambush and sharply attack unsuspecting prey. When a human swims near them, these sharks can also twitch and reveal their camouflage. You'd be lucky if the shark just swims away, but it also happens that it's capable of inflicting serious wounds. People come into contact with this shark not only underwater. The angel shark is a target for fishing, so these fish are often caught and sold. In many reasons, this is the reason why the species is on the verge of extinction, and the shark itself is considered one of the rarest. Some sharks are considered very rare, but they're still occasionally caught by fishermen or stumbled upon by curious divers and scientists. But there are other sharks that are considered rare for different reasons. No one's seen them in a long time. Such a shark is the Pondicherry shark. This is one of the species of gray shark, which has not been seen since 1979. It lives in the waters of Southeast Asia and off the coast of India, but scientists haven't seen it for a long time. The species is recognized as being on the verge of extinction, but it's possible that these sharks have long been absent from our planet. Another super rare shark is the so-called lost shark. It used to be called the false smalltail shark, but the name has been changed because scientists last saw it a long time ago. In their natural habitat, these sharks were seen 80 years ago. Interestingly, the species was described by a museum exhibit, which did not interest researchers until 2019. It's possible that these specimens in the museum are the only tangible thing left of this rare species at all. Perhaps the most famous shark in the world is the great white shark. Everyone's seen it, everyone knows about it, and thanks to pop culture and horror movies like Jaws, it's considered by many to be the most dangerous and aggressive shark in the world. It is indeed worth staying away from, but the bull shark is worth staying even farther away from. Many scientists say that it's the bull shark, not the great white shark, that poses the greatest danger to humans. And yes, it is one of those sharks that you can stumble upon in fresh water. The bull shark can be encountered in a small reservoir, a lake, pool in the backyard of some house, but most often in a river. These fish are tolerant of a wide range of water salinity, so they can survive for a long time in a freshwater river. Moreover, in some rivers, such as the Brisbane River in Australia, there are entire populations of bull sharks. Bull sharks are quite large. They can grow up to 13 feet in length and weigh 780 to 1,000 pounds. But most importantly, they're extremely aggressive. Zoologists call them the most aggressive of all shark species. Usually, they swim slowly and do not waste energy, but during the hunt, they put out everything they have in their tank, 100%. They're in a rage. They attack to finish the prey, and they can attack anyone. Even hippos resting peacefully in the river. Almost half of the attacks of these toothy creatures end tragically for people. 
northern river shark. This is another shark species that feels comfortable in freshwater. The New Guinea river shark, also known as the northern river shark, lives, as its name suggests, off the coast of New Guinea. It can also be found in northern Australia. These sharks enter the mouths and beds of rivers that flow into the seas. These sharks belong to the river sharks genus. You'll hear more about them today. In terms of appearance, New Guinea river sharks resemble many other river sharks. They have a dense gray body, large fins, small broad head and tiny eyes. And what about dangerous teeth? Sickle-shaped mouth of the predator is armed with sharp teeth of different shapes. On the upper jaw, the teeth are triangular, and on the lower jaw, they're all shaped. The New Guinea river shark doesn't have as many teeth as the great white shark, but it knows how to use them properly. These predators mercilessly hunt fish, leaving them no chance of escape. These sharks pose a great danger to the animals that live with them. They're also a danger to humans because of their sharp teeth and hefty size. After all, some individuals grow up to 8.2 feet in length. But they're dangerous only in theory. No actual attacks on humans have been registered yet. Speartooth Shark This predator is a relative of the New Guinea River Shark. The Speartooth Shark is one of the few freshwater sharks in the world and at the same time one of the rarest ones. Scientists do not often manage to catch a Speartooth Shark. So far, they have caught only young individuals of the species, which lived in the mouths of large rivers in northern Australia and New Guinea. In many respects, the Speartooth Shark is exactly the same as the New Guinea River Shark. They have a similar body structure, similar size, and the same teeth. They even share much of the same diet. But the Speartooth Shark is less active. It prefers to move with the current. However, this doesn't mean that the shark is not dangerous. As scientists say, this species is not a threat to humans, but it is a big threat to animals. It's better not to mess with this shark. It's not only in Australia and New Guinea that dangerous freshwater sharks can be found. They can also be found in India, for example, in the Ganges River. The Ganges shark lives here, and it is, once again, a member of the river sharks genus. This is one of the rarest sharks in the world. Only a few samples are available to scientists, and the animal itself has been observed in nature only a few times. It's known that the species is on the verge of extinction and that it's extremely dangerous to humans. At least, that's what the locals say. Indians claim that the Ganges shark is a ferocious man-eater that massacres humans without any difficulty. According to them, the six-and-a-half-foot monsters do not spare anyone in the Ganges River. This is possible, but scientists believe that the locals are wrong. In their opinion, the attacks are carried out by bull sharks, which are frequent guests of the Ganges River. The sharks are similar in appearance, hence the confusion. Researchers urge not to blame the Ganges shark, saying they're not as formidable. Besides, the species is too rare for attacks to occur as often as they're said to be. That's all, guys. Which river would you never go into? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you later.